One of the more exciting parts about being a plumber is when you get to solder copper with a torch. I mean, who doesn't want to play with fire in their daily work, right? But when dealing with a torch, we have to keep in mind, first of all, that we're dealing with thousands of degrees of flaming temperature. And of course, we need to be very careful with that. But also, it's important to understand the torch options and how they work. So let's go over that for a few minutes here. Let's start by talking about gases. These are all highly flammable compressed gases and canisters, so you will need to be exceptionally careful with them. Handle them carefully, store them in a safe place, and if they look damaged at all, please carefully dispose of them. First of all, let's look at propane. Propane is one option, and basically it's the same stuff as you can get for camping, you know, little bottles of propane, but it's in a taller cylinder, easier to use. Uh, one of the disadvantages to these is that propane just doesn't burn as hot. Most plumbers prefer to use MAP gas, which is a mixture of flammable gases, methyl acetylene, propadine, and propane. All these together create a higher flame temperature, which makes your job go faster. You can use propane. It's just going to take longer. So why not use MAP gas? It's in a similar tank, threads onto the torch the same way. You can use the same torch on either propane or a MAP gas tank. So again, might as well get the job done fast, use MAP gas. Plumbers who do a lot of soldering prefer to use acetylene stored in a metal canister called a B-tank. A B-tank can usually be purchased at a plumbing supplier or a gas supplier, and those tanks can be swapped out. So once you empty it, you bring it back, they give you another full one. Of course, you pay for the gas, but yeah. <laughs> Now let's have a look at the torches. Each torch is going to need to have a way to deliver the gas, so there's some kind of a valve on there, and it's going to have some way to ignite the gas, be it a button or a striker. You have to be able to ignite that gas in order to initiate the flame. Let's look at a few options. These are not all of the options, but a few common ones that plumbers use. We'll start with this torch. It's a fairly common torch. It's made for basic use. It's kind of an all-in-one deal as well. Let's look at the different parts. At the bottom, we see where it would thread onto a tank of gas. Then there is a trigger that you use both to ignite the flame and to allow the gas through to the torch tip. Now, when you pull that trigger, it's going to click, send a spark out to the tip, and that's what ignites the gas. On the back side, there's a control valve that will throttle the amount of gas going through, so you can adjust the torch flame based on how much gas you allow through and this knob is you know your control for that on the top is a brass button that is used to hold the torch on so you can actually lock the trigger and that way you don't have to hold it down with your finger the entire time this is useful if you're soldering for more than a minute i mean if you're holding that trigger the whole time it does fatigue your hand that torch will keep going even without you holding it down so that's useful when you're doing soldering for an extended period of time to release the trigger lock, you just pull the trigger again, and that will unlock it and turn off the torch. One disadvantage to this torch is that it doesn't have a swivel head, so you're kind of restricted on the number of angles you can get. And that will lead us to the next torch, which gives us a little more option. This torch is a little more simple in its design. You can see it has the tank connection where that would thread onto the top of a gas tank. It has a volume control knob on the top of the torch. And this volume control also serves as the on and off function for the torch. It just basically lets gas into the torch head. The torch head does have a swivel action, so it can be adjusted in any number of directions, making it easier to get into different types of spaces. This torch does not have a built-in igniter, so you'd have to use a striker or some other way of lighting the gas at the end of the torch. I'll point out that both of these torches are manufactured by Turbo Torch, which is a very reputable manufacturer, one that I can recommend if you're looking to buy a torch of any kind for soldering. Let's have a look at the torch that would connect to an acetylene or B-tank. You see here the basic components. First of all, you're going to have a connection and a gas regulator. The regulator also has a gauge so that it will tell you about how much gas is left in that B tank. Then you have a hose that will connect to that regulator. 
There is a handle for the torch, which also has a valve that will control turning that point on and off. And then there's the torch head. Let's have a look at how all of these are assembled. The regulator is connected to the B tank and tightened on with a crescent wrench. Then the hose connects to the regulator. There's a threaded port that that would connect to off to the side. You'd also want to tighten that with a wrench to make sure that it has a good connection. Now you want to watch carefully on the threads for the hose because at times they are a reverse thread. So in order to tighten this one, we have to go counterclockwise rather than clockwise as you normally would to tighten something on. The torch handle is then connected to the other end of the hose. It does have the volume control and the on-off valve right at the hose connection. So you'd want to Assemble that, tighten that on with a crescent wrench. The torch head is then connected. And there's a number of ways those are installed. Sometimes they just push in like a quick connect. You pop it in there. This one has a little bit of a threading action. And then you twist it the other way to really tighten it in place. Either way, you want to make sure that that torch end is sealed and properly connected before you use the torch. There are at least three valves that function on a B-Tank. First of all, you've got the main valve that comes from the tank. It's got a little square head at the top, and you should be using the tool that comes with that or a crescent wrench in order to turn that on. Please don't ever think about using anything with teeth, like your channel locks or something. You're going to strip it out, make it absolutely impossible to turn that on and off. Then you also have the regulator that can adjust pressure. And then as we talked about before, there is a control valve on the handle of the torch. That's a point of use valve where you can turn that on and off right as you're ready to use it. To use a B-tank torch, you're gonna need a striker as well. There's no igniter on the end. Those torch ends can actually be swapped out for different sizes. So depending on the application, if you're trying to solder something huge, you could put a bigger torch tip on there and get a lot more heat out at a time. Again, plumbers who solder all the time are going to use a B-tank because the tank doesn't run out as fast as a map gas or propane tank would. And that hose being six foot long or so gives more flexibility and you don't have to carry around the weight of the tank. You can just hold that torch tip, get it right where you need it. There's flexibility for whatever angle you need to get at in soldering. So it's a great option. Let's have a look at the striker. Uh, basically, principle of flint and steel, the friction causes a spark. Those ends wear out and can be replaced. They just thread off and you can thread on a new one. So you can buy replacements for those. And, you know, eventually sometimes you just have to replace the whole striker. But usually by replacing these ends, you can keep them going for quite a while. Let's talk about the flame for a minute. Each torch is going to produce a fairly blue flame. And you want to get a, what's called a good feathering. That's where it kind of comes out looks kind of like a feather. You want kind of a triangular formation of the flame directly outside of the torch. Now, there is adjustment to that. You can throttle the torch back to adjust the flame down, or you can send it back out by turning it up. So it kind of depends on what you're soldering, but you want to get a good flame out there so you can produce enough heat. Now, keep in mind that these gases are mixing with air, oxygen in the air, to create combustion. And... If that isn't a good mix, you could have some problems with the flame. If it's an orange flame, then you have a bad mix of air and gas. But these torches are designed to have a good mix of air and gas. Now, on this torch, the air is flowing through those little holes further back on the torch. And notice how that can be manipulated if I twist the torch head or cover it with my hand. That directly affects the flame because it affects the oxygen that's able to move through into the torch tip. So you got to be conscious of that. If your torch is acting funny, watch where the airflow is. If it's dirty or jammed or, or damaged, you know, it's, it's not going to give you the kind of feathering that you need. Also, you want to make sure that that flame gets out away from the torch. Notice here how if I throttle it back too much and it draws that flame back inside of the torch, it actually overheats the torch tip. This is not good for the torch tip. It can actually damage it. And so you want to make sure that you keep that flame far enough out that it's not drawing it back and overheating the torch tip. When you are done using a torch, make sure to always disassemble that, remove it from the tank. You don't want to leave a torch on a tank 
because that creates a potential for a gas leak. Those gases, if the valve on the torch malfunctions, can get out into whatever space you're in. Maybe it's in the vehicle that you're in or the, the room. It just causes really unsafe conditions. So disassemble, make sure that the tank is off and that way you can avoid any dangerous liabilities. Now, soldering can be a lot of fun. And hopefully as you're using torches, you can enjoy the fact that that's a part of your job. But make sure that you do it safely following OSHA and other safety regulations. And make sure that you're following the torch manufacturer's recommendations. I'm just showing you a few things, some basics about torches. But whatever torch you're using, make sure you understand the way it should be used so that you can use it safely. <laughs>